The Lian Li TU-150 small form factor case combines portability and power in a stylish and sensible design. Featuring a 1mm steel frame with brushed aluminum exterior, full tempered glass side panel window, 10 gigabit per second capable USB-C front panel port, as well as support for mini ITX and mini DTX motherboards, the TU-150 is comfortable at home or on the go thanks to the recessed pop-up handle built into the top of the case. It's available in a sleek silver or stealthy black finish, so click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for October 2019. Every month I put together some PC parts lists for those of you at home who might want to build your own computer because that's what my channel is all about. Just FYI, I'm not actually assembling any of these systems today, so if you want to check out me actually building computers, check out my builds playlist. I'll link that in the video's description. My builds this month are based on your votes from last month when I asked what PC builds you want to see in October, and I had some Halloween themed options there. And the number one choice was a very practical gaming PC and a jack o -Lantern. So that's what I'm going to be doing. It will also be a spooky Halloween themed PC. So I feel like I'm accommodating 63% of the votes here. And then we also had a follow-up of just, how about just a regular game PC? So I'm going to do one of those as well. And of course, don't forget to also vote in next month's straw poll, uh, which I'll also link in the description. What do you want to see in November? Uh, we got some different budget ranges or, you know, just to build in a turkey since we're building one in a <laughs> pumpkin this month. We'll see how that goes. Also, while I'm at it, if you'd like to see a step-by-step -step guide for how to build a gaming computer, check out my beginner's guide to building a gaming PC tutorial. I have a, have a playlist for that, and uh, I'm told it's helpful for new builders in particular. All right, let's dive right into it with the first build. I'm going to save the pumpkin build for the second one. We're going to start off with a little bit more practical build. I wanted to sort of come back to this AMD system that I've parted out a couple different times, build it out in a way that I feel like is a little bit extra that's why it's my AMD Plus system. It's coming in at $1,150, maybe just a little higher than that, $1,171.73 according to PC Part Picker, which I'm using to put together my parts list today. It's featuring a Ryzen 5 3600X, an X570 motherboard, and a 5700 XT for a graphics card. And the reason I say I'm coming back to this is because AMD is kind of my platform of choice right now because I feel like it has a decent upgrade path, a good bang for the buck when it comes to the amount of money you're paying for a processor, but then it also comes with a few caveats that you have to keep in mind especially for a new builder that uh, might just add to a little bit of confusion. So I've tried to make this build very straightforward so everything will work together out of the box. You won't have to update anything later. Although of course it does have a nice upgrade path as all of my systems typically do. Uh, so let's start out from the top with our processor which is the Ryzen 5 3600X. Like I said, I'm going for a little bit extra with this build. The 3600 is also a great choice for about $100. They're both six core 12 thread processors. For about $35 more uh, with this, you're gonna get a beefier cooler. It's the Wraith Spy instead of the race stealth and you're going to get a little bit better performance out of the box it's going to run at a higher frequency and you won't need to deal with uh, manually overclocking or anything like that 4.4 gigahertz is the max boost on this processor and the reason i've recommended this processor multiple times is because in my opinion the next step up from here would be to go from six cores to eight cores and for that you're going to need to spend about 330 dollars with the 3700x so the 3600x i think is a nice spot to start at we of course want to pair that with a nice motherboard and i wanted to go with an x570 motherboard here so we don't have to deal with any potential backwards compatibility issues updating old 300 series and 400 series motherboards to work with the 3000 series of processors. Fortunately my boy Steve over at Hardware Unboxed has recently done a top five best x570 motherboards so I went with uh, his choice it's one that I had looked at recently as well for the best entry level x570 board which is the Asus Tough Gaming x570 plus Wi-Fi uh, which is nice for multiple reasons and this board actually has a lot going for it uh, you can see a bit of a closer up picture over here on the Amazon listing, it's only about $200, which is a little bit more expensive than you pay for B450. But for that, you get the peace of mind of knowing that your system is gonna work right out of the gate. It's definitely a nice looking motherboard. It's got some RGB effects and everything, but it's got very solid power delivery. Uh, 12 plus two power stages. Uh, it's also got Wi-Fi built in. It's got gigabit ethernet, the aforementioned built-in Wi-Fi, as well as Bluetooth 5.0. Decent set of IO options on the back with USB 3.0. A PS2 port, which you may or may not be interested in, but it's got some video outs in case you ever wanted to install an APU into it. And with the motherboard chosen, the next step is to choose memory. If you want your memory to plug into your motherboard, just make sure it's DDR4. If you want to be able to enable the XMP values and have the system work, then the best and the safest way to go about doing that is to double check your motherboard's QVL. Uh, so over here on the ASUS webpage for the Tough Gaming X570 Plus, we have memory and device support. You can take a look at memory support specifically for third gen Ryzen processors. This will download a PDF, but it's got a really long list here. What we're looking for on this list is the 36 
600 speed kits, which start here. And there's actually a pretty decent number of them that have been validated. And you can just go down this list and look at the model numbers here and look them up and try to find them. It can often be pretty challenging to find the specific model numbers that are on this list, but I've done a bit of that work for you and I've determined that this Corsair kit. So this Vengeance LPX kit will work with the motherboard, Asus promises. It's DDR4 3600 speed, which is the sweet spot when it comes to third gen Ryzen for getting the most out of your processor. It's got decent timings, uh, cast latency 18, not the fastest, but uh, you know, it's $118 and they're definitely cheaper 16 gig kits, two by eight gig kits than this, um, but getting the peace of mind and knowing it's gonna work out of the box. And then uh, of course it's Corsair and it's a nice design too, pretty low profile. So it's gonna work with a wide variety of coolers. So when I was parting out this build, I chose those as my core components, the CPU, the motherboard, and the memory. And then beyond that, I was filling in the rest of the other four components uh, with an SSD, case, and power supply. And then of course we have to choose a video card. For the SSD, case, and power supply, minus the video card, we're looking at about $761. So pick your poison when it comes to graphics cards. There's options in the two to $300 range that would be perfectly fine to drop into this system. Of course, I'm looking for something that's gonna provide a little bit more balance here. And since it is an all AMD system, or at least it's going to be, and I wanted to go for a little extra. I went with not the AMD Radeon 5700, but the 5700 XT. To that end, I chose a power color option. It's just about $10 more than the MSRP of the standard 5700 XT, which is $399. It comes with a decent sized cooler with dual fans. It comes with a back plate, so it's gonna have a nice clean finish. And power color has already received uh, pretty decent accolades for their work with the 5700 series. So I think this card would work great for just about anyone. Also a little bonus right now uh, that AMD has just kicked off. You get Borderlands 3 or Ghost Recon, as well as three months of Xbox Game Pass with purchase. So that's a nice little add on too. And then finishing off the last three components, we need storage, of course. And I always start with an NVMe SSD if possible. You can go with a SATA SSD, but for a 500 gig class one, you're gonna spend about $48 right now. Uh, in my opinion, it's worth it to spend about five more dollars for an NVMe SSD, uh, which is convenient in that it comes in this little form factor, just an M.2 stick, which you can mount to your motherboard. So you don't have to worry about routing cables over over to a separately plugged in SSD. And while the Patriot Scorch isn't the fastest NVMe SSD out there, it's gonna get you upwards of a thousand megabytes per second reads and writes, which is about double what you get with a SATA SSD. So I think it's worth it for the extra five bucks, only $54 right now on Newegg. For a case, I chose the NZXT H510. I did a build in the H510 Elite. I kept saying the H510 Elite is a little bit expensive for what you get, but at about $80, the H510 has the majority of the features of the H510 Elite and it's only $80 and I've already used it. It comes with dual fans as well. So you get uh, one for intake and one for exhaust. Plenty of room for expansion and a nice sleek looking case. Finally, we need a power supply. Uh, again, since I'm adding the plus on this AMD plus build, I went with 80 plus gold instead of 80 plus bronze. You could save a few bucks by going for 80 plus bronze, but you're looking for a power supply between 550 and 750 watts. 650 watts is the sweet spot, but I found a 750 watt Cooler Master MWE gold. So I made the call here to go for a power supply that is uh, better rated when it comes to efficiency, 80 plus gold, but it does not have a full modular uh, feature set. So fortunately, since you're working in a reasonably size case, size case, there's plenty of extra room down at the bottom to tuck away your extra cables. Beyond that, I'm 99% sure they're all black and 75 bucks uh, for this wattage of power supply is a pretty decent deal. So for my money, when it comes to the sweet spot, the mid range of PC gaming right now, that's kind of what I would gear you towards. Uh, spending around 200 to $250 on a CPU, maybe around 300 to 500 dollars on a graphics card and I think this AMD platform with the Ryzen 3000 series is the way to go right now especially if you're looking for a potential upgrade path because you have a six core processor out of the gate but you could upgrade to an eight core 12 core or even a potential upcoming 16 cores which should be out in November with the 3950X. Moving on to the second build which is a gaming PC and a jack-o-lantern. Uh, my parts list has come to $770 and I'll explain why I've made certain choices for what I'm dropping in there in just a moment. And my mind of course first went to, well, has anyone else ever actually done this before? And I should have been aware, but uh, Kyle, Kyle actually did this uh, about two years ago, built a gaming PC inside a pumpkin. I'll li link his video down in the description, did a little time-lapse build, mini ITX system in there. Uh, they even did some RGB LED lighting, which is absolutely gonna be necessary. But you know, in my opinion, is, is a little small. I think the, uh, the pumpkin they actually chose was a little bit on the tiny side. They were barely able to wedge everything in there. I don't think they had anything 
anything going on as far as actual airflow. So my goal with my jack-o'-lantern build is going to be do it better than Kyle did. And I'm not sure whether that's setting a high bar or a low bar, but he actually did get some some sexy B-roll of his of his build at the very end. So I'm I'm gonna try to carve the pumpkin better. Uh, we got we gotta still have the RGB LEDs in there, I think, because he set the bar with that. But I want some better considerations when it comes to cooling for sure. And just overall, I'd like to have a little bit more room to work with in there. So those were the considerations uh, for my builds parts list. And I think to that end, I need to maybe buy one of these pumpkins I saw at Sprouts the other day when I was walking through. It's called a Big Mac pumpkin. Over here on the right, and this is just Google images, you can see some absurdly large versions of those, but they can be 50 to 200 pounds. Uh, at Sprouts, they're $50 each, but I might be doing some fall activities with the family as well. So I, I'll be keeping an eye out for the perfect pumpkin, I guess, in the next couple weeks to do this build with because I got to get it done in October. And then I'm going to need to do the build and then the testing pretty quickly afterwards because I think that's going to be the shortcoming of this build is longevity. Because uh, I don't know how long your jack-o'-lanterns typically last after you've had them out on your porch or whatever else, but uh, I, I don't have high hopes. Going over the rest of the parts here, I mainly chose these, uh, a lot of them because I already have them on hand. So I have the parts in order to build this. This is not necessarily a slouch of a computer though. We have the Ryzen 5 2600 which is available for $130. Really good deal for that six core uh, from last generation. I got the Gigabyte B450i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi for the motherboard, uh, which is a solid little board. It comes with Wi-Fi integrated, so of course we can't have a pumpkin PC without actually having uh, you know, wireless connectivity as well. But that seems like it should be part of it. Again, went pretty simple with the memory with another Corsair Vengeance LPX kit. This is DDR4 3200. Got it so it'll work with my uh, AMD processor. For a SSD, we have an Intel 660 PC series M.2 2280 NVMe SSD, which is available for about 60 bucks. Uh, solid little NVMe SSD and one that I also already have on hand. We have a GTX 660, 1660 for the graphics card. I was considering going for like the 1650 and not having the requirement of plugging in power to it, but I wanted to go again, just a step up here. So we, d we are gonna have to deal with some supplemental power on this card, uh, but again, it is one that I have and it's not terribly long. So um, length was also a concern for me. And we need a power supply. EVGA has, uh, I think, somewhat recently come out with this uh, Supernova uh, SFX series of power supplies. So 550 watts and completely modular uh, was a factor here. I don't want to have any extra cables in there because there's nowhere to route them or tuck them away or hide them uh, inside a jack-o'-lantern. So we got to keep that in mind as well. And then I'm considering finishing touches for a build like this. It's in a jack-o'-lantern. Now, I, I want to have some airflow, some actual active airflow, and I want to be able to turn it on without having to like take a side off and like reach in and push a button or something like that. So I didn't line up fans yet because I have a bunch of fans here that would be fairly easy to integrate. Um, we'll, we'll see, uh, and that'll greatly depend on the actual pumpkin that I end up with as well. But I did decide to grab a power switch and they have really inexpensive power switches on Amazon, but I wanted one that looked a little bit nicer. So this one's uh, a little less than $10, but it's actually got the, I forget what style push button that is, but it's, it's the much sturdier and nicer feeling one. And it's also got uh, LED backlight. I just went for the red option there. They didn't have orange. Uh, so red will be close enough for us. And then we also got to have some front panel connectivity, right? Um, we're going to have a power switch. So we got USB 3.0 on the board. So I just went with the little USB 3.0 dual port cable. So I can take some USB 3.0 ports and put them somewhere on the pumpkin so you can plug in your, your external USB drives. I think that's very important as well. But guys, of course, uh, this is this is going to be a fun project. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And if you guys have any suggestions for little extras, anything more that you think I should do with the pumpkin PC build, the jack lantern PC, let me know because whatever happens, it's got to turn out better than Kyle's because he already did this a couple years ago. Anyway, guys, I'll link uh, videos I referenced down in the video's description as well as all the parts for the parts list I've gone over today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll be back again next month with another set of parts list for you guys. So don't forget to vote in those draw polls too. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out and we'll see you guys next time.